Eclipse Foundation is one of the world's largest open source foundations, and we provide a home for vendor-neutral, cloud-native innovation that enables developers to bridge the gap between existing and emerging workloads. Our vibrant community of independent developers, organizations, and vendors are advancing open source runtimes, frameworks, and tools for building, deploying, and managing enterprise applications and workloads in the cloud. Since 2018, we have provided a home for Jakarta EE, the successor to Java EE. Within the Jakarta EE Working Group, the world's leading innovators in cloud-native Java and independent community members are collaborating to evolve enterprise Java technologies under an open, vendor-neutral process. A diverse community has delivered open-source specifications, TCKs, and compatible implementations of the Jakarta EE full platform and web profiles. Our community is also delivering open source specifications for developing enterprise Java microservices. Eclipse MicroProfile is a leading microservices framework with powerful capabilities for designing, building, and deploying containerized Java applications that run on Kubernetes. With MicroProfile, enterprise Java developers can build on their existing Java knowledge and experience as they transition to the microservices programming model. Application portability is supported across multiple microprofile runtime implementations from a diverse community of organizations in the Java ecosystem. Developer teams need great tools to succeed in the new world of on-premises, hybrid, and multi-cloud deployments. Eclipse Che is a collaborative Kubernetes native development solution that delivers everything a cloud developer needs, including the IDE, its plugins, and their dependencies, all running as a Kubernetes application. Che 7 also comes with Eclipse Thea, a modern web-based IDE that is compatible with VS Code extensions. If you haven't already, we invite you to join the Eclipse community. We are open to you. So to kick off day two at a high note, let's invite our first speaker. The community manager for cloud development tools at the Eclipse Foundation, Brian King is responsible for driving community growth, adoption, and evolution around open source cloud-based development tools. Working closely with members and developers from Red Hat, IBM, Intel, SAP, and other industry giants, Brian leads strategic planning, organizational decision-making, and new project execution for one of the industry's fastest growing working groups. Please welcome Mr. Brian King, who will be sharing with us his talk on the topic, Your Open Source Journey and the Eclipse Foundation. Brian, over to you. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Aryan. Uh, let me just go ahead and share my slides to get started. OK. I hope you can all uh, see that. So thank you to the organizers for this opportunity to speak. Um, I have very fond memories of visiting India. I was in India three times, in fact, uh, twice in Bangalore and once in Hyderabad. And I hope very much to get the opportunity to go back again, um, of course, <laughs> once uh, COVID allows us to do so. Um, so jumping into what I'm going to talk about today, um, I'm sure all of you are familiar with open source and you probably contribute to some open source projects or maybe you want to contribute to open source uh, and um, are looking for the right path in. So today I will talk uh, about um, some paths via the Eclipse Foundation and also just some general tips on getting started with open source and how can, to contribute in open source communities and projects. And I'll also give you some background about what we do at the Eclipse Foundation. Okay, so here's the agenda for today. Um, and we'll go through these section by section. So, you know, why open source? Um, 
I'm probably preaching, <clears throat> excuse me, preaching to the converted here. Um, but one point I'd like to call out is that participation in open source is surging. Um, you know, there's been, uh, I think, a lot of uh, ups and downs and waves and troughs in, in the open source world over the last uh, two or three decades. Um, you know, it was under threat for a long time. But I think in the end, what really happened is that open source won, right? Open source powers a lot uh, of what we do today. Um, it's, you know, it runs a lot of the infrastructure of the Internet, uh, a lot of the major pieces of software that you're using out there. Uh, probably have open source built into it that you might not even be aware of. <clears throat> um, so these are some some numbers um, that we thought you might find interesting. So you know, open source makes up about 80 to 90 percent of applications out there. Um, and this is according to a record, Forrester report from uh, 2017. The number could even be bigger today. Um, the other two numbers are 100 million um, and 56 million GitHub users, 100 million uh, GitHub hosts uh, and repositories. Um, you'll find them on the GitHub site. Um, and that just shows you the massive, massive participation uh, in open source. <clears throat> now, some more numbers. 81% um, <clears throat> of companies are consuming open source in their products or services. Uh, I'll dig in a little bit uh, soon on why that is. Um, and of those, 44% are contributing code upstream to open source projects, so they are giving back. Uh, again, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more on why they, why they why do that. And you know, according to a number of reports we've seen, there's been a 100% increase in productivity. Um, it makes sense. You can kind of go from you know, from zero to nothing very, very fast by building on top of open source software. You don't have to write code from scratch. Um, so you're essentially you're, you're, you're standing on the shoulders of giants when you um, <clears throat> consume open source uh, code and open source uh, project software. So um, as we've seen, open source uh, continues to be more and more popular. It powers a lot of the software that's out there that we use today. Now, I want to talk a little bit about why uh, organizations participate in open source uh, and in the Eclipse Foundation. Um, the Eclipse Foundation is, is very much a member driven organization. And uh, these members are organizations from very, very large corporations uh, to medium sized businesses to startups to um, academic institutions, nonprofit organizations. So we have a very, very broad and diverse uh, member base. <clears throat> now, this might not be so relevant to you as you start off your, your, your open source journey, um, but I thought it's good background uh, regardless. So for, for organizations uh, you know, consuming open source and participating in open source, it demonstrate, demonstrates good corporate citizenship. Um, they can promote their accomplishments, for example, through open source. As I alluded to earlier, it accelerates innovation. So you can, um, I'll show a little uh, image later that's going to kind of explain this a little bit more, but you know, you can use open source as the foundational pieces for your software. And all you need to do is worry about, you know, how to innovate on top of that and how to provide differentiation from your competitors. Um, participation in open source collaboration. So the collaboration piece is key here. So what you're doing is you're learning to um, work with others, you know, even in a fiercely competitive environment. And, you know, maybe rather counterintuitively, you can say PR to your investments. Um, so, you know, you're, avoid, you're avoiding leaving the features, quality, and sustainability of important technologies to others or to chance. You're playing an active part in that. And you can mitigate your business risks um, by making sure you're complying with antitrust laws and that you're sharing intellectual property uh, in a correct way. And of course, uh, another reason why a lot of uh, companies and organizations participate in open source is to recruit and retain top talent. 
Um, I think you know it's fair to say that developers today, um, their their software developers, their their resumes are essentially on GitHub or on GitLab, right? So all your work is out there to see. So um, when you're working in open source projects, you can kind of find the right talent for 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 what you need. So that's just some of the reasons why our members and companies in general participate in open source. I want to talk to you a little bit about what we do at the Eclipse Foundation. So some of you might know Eclipse from the Eclipse IDE, um, which has been around for a, a number of years now. Uh, however, the Eclipse Foundation is much more than that. We are a collection of over 350 open source projects now, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about um, how we're structured and about those projects. So for 17 years now, the Eclipse Foundation has provided our global community of developers and organizations with a mature, scalable and business friendly platform and environment for collaboration and innovation. We provide community driven governance processes and infrastructure that fuel the commercial success of our members and also fuel the thriving communities within our projects. So, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of um, projects sites, organizations, companies out there doing open source. So, you know, what differentiates us? What, what advantages uh, do the Eclipse Foundation bring? Um, you know, obviously uh, I mentioned GitHub before, they're doing a fantastic job. Um, that's still, I, I would say, still very much do it yourself, open source with the sheer volume of projects in there, it's difficult to get noticed and at the moment, there's no uh, clear IP management uh, or processes in place around that. Um, a lot of companies are doing open source around projects that they use in their main projects. Um, uh, obviously, the threat of that is, is that a single company, you know, retrains complete control over that open source project. Uh, it's difficult to engage with other organizations and so on. And the advantages of, of having an open source foundation, such as the Eclipse Foundation, there certainly are other open source foundations out there doing a great job, um, is very much a sustainable vendor neutral collaboration. I think vendor neutral is key here um, in that no one company or organization can adversely influence a project. Uh, governance is with the collective of the members and the community. We certainly have a very pragmatic approach to IP management. Um, um, we have uh, a lot of existing processes and procedures in place um, for running uh, open source projects. And we have a very, very large community of committers and contributors as well. So just some numbers. Um, obviously, you can read these yourself. Um, a couple I want to call out. Um, and certainly the first one, projects, you know, I mentioned earlier, we're known um, for the Eclipse IDE, but now we have close to 400, I would say, projects that are overseen in the Eclipse Foundation. <clears throat> we have 330 plus members uh, and they value our unique working group governance model and processes for uh, enabling rapid innovation and growing industry adoption of emerging open source technologies. Uh, in terms of the the foundation itself, we're very small, 30, 35, I think that could be up to 40 now staff members. Um, so, um, you know, we're kind of lean, um, but we provide, uh, um, you know, a great amount of value to, to our members. So what are our strategic, strategic focus areas? So, <clears throat> Here, here I would say the four top level ones. It's certainly not an exhaustive list. Uh, we do focus in, in other areas as well. Uh, cloud native Java is of course a big one. So, you know, we have um, working groups based around and projects based around Jakarta EE, um, uh, Adoptium and so on. Um, so if you're a Java developer or you're interested in Java, there's certainly a lot of opportunities and a lot of projects to collaborate on there. Uh, IoT and Edge, obviously a uh, very important uh, domain. 
Um, we have IoT uh, Edge and Spark plug working groups uh, where we have a number of members collaborating um, around our projects. Uh, automotive, um, I don't know if it looks the same to you, but cars are essentially becoming big computers these days uh, that run on batteries. So, you know, driven by software and that's um, still a growing field and, and very, very important one for our members. Um, and tools, of course, um, you know, um, uh, tools are certainly our <clears throat> one of our core competencies. And what we're doing is we're moving from, you know, desktop local tools into the cloud, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about. Um, so we're home to, you know, lots of industry standards and an open source stack for building and running enterprise applications and workloads for cloud <clears throat> from the cloud to the edge. Um, and these are just some of the projects. Um, you might have heard of them. Uh, Jakarta E already mentioned, there's MicroProfile. Um, there's Eclipse Thea, there's IOFog, which is an IoT project uh, and so on. So this is just a small, small, uh, snapshot of our vibrant community of projects. And these are the services we provide. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into to details about these, but on, on a very, very high level, um, we have the government governance and processes, um, which is, is, is more important than you may think. You know, um, open source is much, much more than about the code. Um, you know, you have to make sure that your project is being run correctly, that it's able to uh, attract contributors and sustain contributors um, moving forward. Um, so, so governance and process is very, very important. Um, we provide ecosystem development and marketing. Uh, so we work with our members to really shine a light on what they're doing. Um, we provide uh, marketing uh, expertise to our projects. Um, I think this this is certainly getting better in the open world, for, but open source world. But for a long time, it was problematic where there was a lot of great projects, but they just didn't know how to talk about what they were doing and get the word out about and differentiate themselves uh, in the market. So very, very important uh, for open source projects. Don't forget about marketing. Um, um, IP management and licensing. Um, so IP, of course, intellectual property. Um, you know, it, it may seem that just choosing an open source license, uh, you know, just choose any license and, and forget about it and, and move forward. Um, yes, there are a lot of flexible and great licenses out there, but you know, we make sure that for our projects that they're choosing the right one for them. Um, and all the software that they're integrating into their projects, uh, whether that be Eclipse uh, software or other open source software, uh, we ensure that um, you know they're complying with with uh, all intellectual uh, property <coughs> uh, issues. So uh, infrastructure is the last one. Um, you know we provide uh, source code hosting, uh, issue tracking. Uh, a wide, wide variety uh, of infrastructure for running open source projects. Um, um, of course, we support GitHub, GitLab, and so on, and we have some of our own hosted uh, ones as well. So they're essentially the four top level um, <clears throat> services, core services that we provide. So here's a collage of uh, just some of our growing Eclipse Foundation membership community. You might recognize some logos in there, um, some you might not. And I, I, I wanted to throw this, this chart in and um, just on a, on a very basic level, um, we, we um, enable open innovation on an industrial scale, but how, how do we do that? So I think that this, this is reflective of open source in, in general, like the governance layer is obviously very important. You know, I mentioned licensing, I mentioned uh, IP. Um, so once that solid foundation piece is in place and you don't have to worry about what happens next, so then there's the collaboration layer on top. Uh, this is essentially, um, requirements, 
uh, use cases, building new features into the software and the actual software and projects itself. Um, and then with that, you can take um, it, uh, the project, and you can uh, put what we call the competition layer on top. So this is, this is where you provide the extra value um for 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 whatever you want to do with the software right um we've estimated that the eclipse community has invested um you know since its inception over 13 billion in software value for the benefit of all i want to talk a little bit about one of our organizing models and that is working groups so you know as I mentioned, 380 plus open source projects, but you know, on their own, they, they might be might not be useful, right? Or, or you know, how do you figure out how to prioritize and put resources behind various projects? So we do that through what we call working groups. Uh, working groups is a collection of members who come together um, um and, and collaborate around a particular domain or a particular set of tools i'll talk about some of those working groups in a minute but this is essentially uh how it looks like um you know um the, the, the working groups provide open and vendor neutral governance framework for individuals and organizations to collaborate in collaborative uh, engage in collaborative development um Membership in the Eclipse Foundation and our working groups in an investment to ensure that the critical technologies that you um, rely on will not only survive, but thrive and keep up with evolving use cases, requirements, and commercial opportunities. So um, it's about extending best practices as well, of course. Um, uh, enabling industry collaboration and coordination across many open source projects. Now, the, the types of companies that collaborate in our working groups are, are more often than not competitors to each other. Um, they're building, they might be building products in, in the same space, um, but they realize that, um, you know, you, they can still provide innovation on top of open source projects. And I mentioned earlier, you know, that you can be faster to market, um, if you're participating in a working group in an open source project, you can have more influence in its direction um, and so on. So, you know, very much standing on the shoulders of giants, collaborating together and then providing innovation on top of that. That's how working groups work. Um, so I, I've mentioned some of these already. Uh, I'm not going to read through these. Um, just call out one of them there, you know, archit architectural discussions and collaboration across open source projects. So that's very much having an influence uh, on projects. That's not to say the working groups tell open source projects not uh, how to work. Um, that's not how, uh, how it happens. Uh, our open source projects have their own governance models um, and their own processes for development. Um, however, what they can do is they can um, um they can provide advice to open source projects and they can collaborate with open source projects um, um to to try and, and and really um you know move the project forward and uh, help it understand the market better and provide areas to, uh, to focus on so here are some of our working groups um i mentioned earlier iot edge native jakarta ee um, Open ADX around automotive. Um, we have the open hardware group, open mobility, and so on. Um, the, the working group that I focus most on in my job is the cloud dev tool, which I'm going to talk about in a, in a moment. So this one is particularly close to my heart, the, uh, the Cloud Development Tools Working Group. Um, and what is it all about? Um, it's about defining and building an ecosystem of best-in-class open source web and cloud-based developer tools and to promote and drive broad adoption of these tools. So, you know, migration to the cloud, um, it's not a new phenomenon. I think it's been happening 
uh, in a lot of areas over a number of years. Um, and it's also not new for development tools, but we're really seeing it take off in the last couple of years. Um, so um, a great example is uh, VS Code, for example. You know, Even though that's a desktop tool, it's built on web technologies. Um, and a version of it will be coming to the cloud very soon um, in the form of GitHub code spaces. Um, so it's, it's, it's written in, in JavaScript technologies and, and so on. So there's great advantages um, of moving to the cloud, of course, if you're a software developer. Um, a couple of them are, you know, it's easier to set up your development environment and to share that development environment across teams. Um, I used to be a software developer, so I know the pain of spending hours and sometimes days of setting up developer environments, but uh, cloud tools enable what we call one-click developer environments, um, where you know, all the resources that you need and all the software you need is just right there in containers waiting for you. So uh, some of the members of the Cloud Dev Tools Working Group, um, large companies like Ericsson, Red Hat, um, Broadcom, and so on. Um, to smaller uh, organizations like Type Fox and Eclipse Source. And uh, we have some new members around embedded tools um, like Renesas, SD Microelectronics, uh, and ARM. Um, and some of those companies uh, have already built some very interesting things uh, on top of our projects. And these are the projects uh, of the Cloud Dev Tools Working Group. Um, and the three I want to talk about today are Eclipse J. Eclipse Thea and the Open VSX registry. So very quickly, Thea is it's a web IDE platform. So uh, IDE integrated development environment. So that's when you have your editor, your command line interface, your debugger, and so on, um, all in one place. Um, it's a very very extensible platform. Uh, it's it's architected to run in the web browser. Um, although very soon there will be a desktop version of Eclipse Thea for experimenting with. Um, and Thea uses Eclipse Open VSX registry, um, which is an open source alternative to the Microsoft Visual Studio Marketplace for supporting VS Code extensions. Um, some very, very interesting uh, adopters and usage of Eclipse Thea. Um, so ARM, for example, they have built ARM Embed Studio uh, using Eclipse Thea. Google Cloud Shell, um, Gitpod, which you might have heard of, that's built by a company called Typefox in Germany. Um, and they're doing a lot of fantastic word, work around developer tools in the cloud. So plenty of activity, uh, plenty of innovation in this space, and ultimately plenty of choice for developers. Um, what's Eclipse J? Um, so um, Eclipse J is what I like to think of as the kitchen sink. <laughs> um, so you have everything thrown in, uh, which I'll show you in the next slide. But essentially, it's it's a, a Kubernetes native IDE for developer teams, um, uh, running everything in containers. Um, and these are the type of things uh, Eclipse J workspaces support. So obviously the tools for, for, for editing your code, uh, source control, and so on, um, to setting up your build environment, your runtime environment, your test environment, and your debug environment, all in one place. Um, and these are some of the, um, <clears throat> some of the, uh, um, uh, contributors and adopters to the HA project. And a very interesting one is um, Red Hat Code Ready Workspaces, which is part of their OpenShift offering. Uh, Red Hat has invested a lot in, in Eclipse J. And finally, uh, in terms of Cloud Dev Tools, I want to talk about the OpenVSX um, <clears throat> registry. It's a registry of VS Code extensions. Um, so you're probably asking yourself, why? Uh, why does the world need another <laughs> registry or marketplace for VX code extensions? Um, there's a couple of reasons why we built it. One is that uh, the license of the Microsoft Marketplace doesn't allow VS code extensions to be consumed by other software apart from VS code. Um, 
Also, it allows, we think very importantly, self-hosted marketplaces. So if you want to take the project code and run your own marketplace, you can do that. Um, so this is an interesting scenario for some companies who want to, for example, uh, run their marketplace behind a firewall um, and kind of limit or filter the, the types of extensions that their, their users and their staff can install. Uh, all open source. Up yourself to a multitude of more users. Um, it's integrated in Gitpod, it's integrated in other Thea projects. Um, more recently, um, there's an, uh, an ID called Onivim that has adopted it, and another one that's going to be supporting it very soon called Coder. Uh, there's also a, a, an open source fork of VS Code called VS Codium that supports OpenVSX. So um, you know it's it's a it's a it's a marketplace. It's a registry of VS Code extensions that's spreading its wings out into multiple other applications. Um, you know, if you're looking for a, a good starting point um, for working cloud dev tools or contributing to open source, uh, I'd urge you to write a VS Code extension. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Now. Um, how to get involved. Um, so, you know, what, what are the open source rules of engagement? I'm sure you're familiar with some of these. It's, it's, there's three that I want to call out um, with a very big caveat around one of them. So obviously open source projects are transparent. Uh, by design, they're publicly and easily accessible. They're open. Uh, everybody should participate on the set by the same rules. So it's a level playing field. Um, and meritocratic. So you earn your way in. Now I have a big asterisk be beside this one because, um, you know, I don't think everybody is provided with the same opportunities to participate. Um, so I'll give you an example. So for example, say, you know, there's an open source project with, you know, a, you know, one terabyte, uh, you know, um, size code base, but you have a very, very poor internet connection, right? So that from, from the get go, that is a barrier to entry for people, right? Um, so as you're, as you're architecting your project, you should think about these things as well. Also, you should think about in terms of, of um, you know, uh, diversity and inclusion, of course. You know, what are the barriers to entry for for some groups in our society to open source? Um, I'd say they're there. I'd say we're getting better at seeing that, and we're providing structures within our projects uh, to enable a broader set of contributions. Um, so, something to keep in mind. Yes, you know, you earn your way in in terms of, um, you know, you have to know what you're doing. Um, you know, putting pull requests in, commenting on issues participating in community discussions on the mailing list and so on. Um, however, we should not forget that there are sometimes invisible barrier to entries, barriers to entry for some people um, and, and, and certain biases as well within community that we need to be aware of and we need to eliminate. So what does contributing to an Eclipse project look like? It's very similar to any open source project. Uh, there are some basics that you need to do to get started. Uh, so the three steps I would encourage you to look at the takeaway from this uh, talk is is to find a project, uh, then sign the Eclipse committer agreement, and then you know if you're doing commits, uh, which is one one pathway to participation, you know, code commits is to sign off uh, on your commits, and, and I'll, I'll give an overview on how to do that. So you know with close to 400 projects, which one do you choose? Um, Go to projects.eclipse.org, uh, have a look around and find one that, that interests you. I'll talk a little bit how, how to do that in a minute, um, but this is where you start. Um, the Eclipse contributor agreement is just saying that, um, you know, the, the, um, it's just acknowledging that you've authored 100% uh, of the content, you have necessary rights for it. Um, you're providing it under a license associated with the project. And of course, there's a public record of the contrib contribution. Um, 
the very, very important uh, intellectual property management step, of course. Um, and I remain, it, it's, it's to ensure that all contributions to projects remain in the, in the commons, in the collective. Um, so don't be intimidated by steps like this. This is, uh, this is standard in many open source projects. Um, and uh, as I said, it's very important. <clears throat> so to do that, go to accounts.eclipse.org, set up your Eclipse account, um, you know, read around some of the documentation and so on. Um, and, you know, let's fast forward a few steps, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but, you know, as you do make pull requests and commit code, um, there is a very important part that you, you, you do sign off um, with your name and your email address on the commits. Um, so these, these um, credentials can be put in and automated, of course, um, and it's just a further assertion that you agree to the terms of the Eclipse Committer Agreement. So that's all very well. Uh, however, uh, I urge you to hang on and think about a few things uh, before you get involved with Eclipse and an open source in general. And these are just some sanity checks uh, about your motivations and your abilities for contributing. So um, I would urge you to ask yourself these questions before getting involved in any open source projects. Firstly, Am I interested in this project? Okay. Um, I think there is a temptation to contribute to projects that are cool, you know, that get a lot of press, um, uh, very high profile, and so on. However, if it's a technology, if it's a piece of software that you really don't use or you're not interested in, you know, that that might be a red flag right from the start. Um, is this is it assignment so school assignment or work related um that's a good motivation for participating in open source it's also a good way of learning um and if it's work related of course you may have to do it um so ask yourself that question and very much related is you know will it help my career whether your career in a particular job you're in now or in your future career as you see it um so I know a lot of you are university students, and, and this is an important question you should be thinking about. Um, you know, will will it help me moving forward through my career? Do I understand the project? Um, you know, obviously complexity levels vary on open source projects and any code base. Um, so spend some time figuring out that first. Um, don't just jump in expecting you know to know everything about a project and to be able to submit your first pull request the next day okay um because that could end in disappointment where you know um the pro the code reviewers um you know might call out the, the um the contributions and say hey you know we don't do it this way we do it that way please take some more time um i think projects are are, are generally trying to be better uh to help um first time committers and to help uh, new people into the community uh, but at the same time they're very very busy people right so they have to do a lot of um, reviews and they have to do a lot of other work as well so so if you spend some time up front um trying to understand the project that will help enormously and of course related to that do i have the skills to contribute or do i want to learn the skills right um open source projects can can be a very useful place to learn as well, whether that's learning a programming language or learning some other skill. Um, so, you know, check, do a check in on, on that with yourself and also check is is the project itself open um, to people learning. Some are, some are better than others at that. <clears throat> and are there ways are of contributing beyond the code? So for example, uh, documentation. Documentation is core content. Uh, for Eclipse projects and for many other open source projects. Um, it's maintained using the same rules as the source code. Um, and there's various places where it's deployed, whether that's the Eclipse Foundation website, um, whether it's it's in, in the products itself, um, there's documentation servers, whether it's in GitHub wikis or so on. Um, so there's plenty of places where it's deployed. Um, issues and bugs, of course, are core content. They're very important to open source projects. Is this something you're interested in? Um, 
We primarily use GitHub and GitLab issues in open source projects um, at Eclipse, but we also support Bugzilla. Um, you know, does the project have a testing framework? Are you interested in testing? Uh, how do you use that testing framework? Uh, ask yourself that question. And getting involved at this level, I think, is a great excuse also just to be a user of the project software, right? And that goes back to what I was saying earlier. You know, are you interested in this project? Are you interested in this piece of software? Do you use it? Um, and if you do, uh, I think, you know, your contributions could be more valuable. And every open source project at Eclipse uh, has a, what we call a dev list, a developer list. And a lot of the, the project conversations happen there, especially the technical conversations. Um, so this is also what we consider core content. Uh, it's very, very important to running up the project. So you know, I'd urge you at the start to, to uh, you know, listen in on some of those conversations, to read the archives. It goes back to understanding about the project and so on. Um, um, so that, that's, that's another way to contribute, at least at the start. There are many other ways to contribute in open source projects, um, advocacy through various channels, including blog posts and social media, you can organize an event, uh, you can join in user forum discussions, contribute design uh, assets, uh, contribute translations, and so on. Going back to what I said earlier, if there's, if, if, if you know, if, if, if you want to uh, um, maybe a, um, a kind of an isolated way to start uh, on your journey, especially in cloud dev tools, I'd urge you to write a VS Code extension and publish it to the open VSX registry. Uh, and lastly, um, attend our events. This is a great way of learning about our communities. Uh, EclipseCon happens every year. Of course, it's happening virtually at the moment. Last year it was virtual. And this year it will be virtual again in October. Uh, we invite you along for Cloud Dev Tools. We have a couple of formats. Cloud Tool Time uh, happens roughly every three to four weeks, um, where we bring in uh, one of our project contributors to talk about the technologies and the software they're working on. We have a new format called Cloud Chat, which, we, which we'll be launching soon, which is a more casual um, kind of you know podcast style ch chat. Um, um, on Twitch TV that, uh, you know, we get people around talking about various issues of the day. So please attend our events. And I want to thank you very much uh, for, for listening to my talk. Uh, I wish you all success on your open source journey. If you have any questions about uh, Eclipse Foundation, about Eclipse Cloud Dev Tools, or about open source in general, please don't hesitate to contact me. There is my email address. Uh, please check out eclipse.org. And the Cloud Dev Tools Working Group is at ecdtools.eclipse.org. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Brian, for uh, connecting with us today. Uh, I'd like to ask all the attendees, if you have any questions for Brian or the Eclipse Foundation, you can drop them in the questions box. I see there is already one question uh, from Shivam Jalotra. Shivam asks, uh, what are the steps that a student has to follow if he wishes to con uh, con collaborate in some Eclipse projects? Uh, yeah, thanks for the question. So uh, I think a student um, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, pathway is, is, is the same as, as any other uh, contributor uh, into open source. Um, so, as I as I said in my talk, I would I would I would start by trying to understand the project. So, uh, trying the software, uh, reading the documentation. The next step I would urge is to join um, the communication channels for that project. So, whether that's the developer mailing list or whether it's a more, you know, real time channel like uh, some projects use Gitter, some of them use Slack. Um, so, finding out what those real time uh, collaboration channels are and talking to other people in the project. I think that's crucial. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question, especially when you're getting started. So p make sure to ask lots and lots of questions. Um, try the software. Um, and then ultimately, you know, once you're feeling more and more confident, you know, then and try, try your first um, contribution. So whether that's a, you know, committing code, whether that's writing documentation, whether that's participating in some, you know, technical conversations or so on. 
uh, that should should ultimately be the goal. So so find something that interests you, understand the project, and then take baby steps into it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and the next question that we have is how can how we can attend events of the Eclipse Foundation? Um, <clears throat> so they're all happening online, <laughs> like all other uh, events these days. Um, so it's just about finding them, uh, essentially. Um, um, if you go to the Eclipse.org uh, uh, website, um, you will see a section, event section. Um, so just explore uh, there. The the big one, of course, is EclipseCon. EclipseCon is our uh, three-day event that uh, happens every year. Um, we had a very successful one in 2020, uh, our first virtual one um, after doing it for more than 15 years. Um, so the fantastic thing, I think, about virtual events is obviously it opens us up to a much, much broader audience, you know, uh, in, in the in the in-person event, you know, there's barriers to entry, you know, it's, you know, the plane tickets, the, the, the hotel costs, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, virtual events, anybody can show up. So um, there's EclipseCon, but also look at specific working groups and look at their community pages um, and their event sections on their sites and see which ones interest you. So for Cloud Dev Tools, I mentioned Cloud Tool Time, you know, that happens on Crowdcast every three to four weeks. Um, so we we advertise that in in a number of places and, and other working groups as well have their own events. Um, so explore them as well. Okay, great. Uh, so if there are any other questions, you can drop them in the questions uh, box. Uh, so I don't think there are any other questions. So I'd like to thank Eclipse Foundation for all the support that they have provided us with. And uh, I'd even like to thank you on the behalf of the entire Pragma team for uh, taking out some time and joining us today. Thank you so much, Brian. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you to the whole team for this opportunity. And best of luck.